And you, good Jerome, you will come with me? The priest shook his head and pointed to Athelstane. The wounded Saxon reposed on a rude couch made of skins piled in the snow. I stay here to attend to this man. He is sorely wounded. Turlow looked about. The walls of the scally had crashed into a mass of glowing embers. Brogar's men had set fire to the storehouses and the long galley. And the smoke and flame vied luridly with the growing morning light. You will freeze or starve. Come with me. I will find sustenance for us both. Persuade me not, my son. He is a pagan and a reaver. No matter. He is a human, a living creature. I will not leave him to die. So be it. Turlow prepared to cast off. The boats of the picks were already rounding the point. The rhythmic clacker of their oarlocks came clearly to him. They looked not back, bending stolidly to their work. He glanced at the stiff corpses about the beach, at the charred embers of the scally and the glowing timbers of the galley. In the glare, the priest seemed unearthly in his thinness and whiteness, like a saint from some old illuminated manuscript. In his worn, pallid face was a more than human sadness a greater than human weariness. Look, he cried suddenly, pointing seaward. The ocean is of blood. See how it swims red in the rising sun. Oh, my people, my people, the blood you have spilt in anger turns the very seas to scarlet. How can you win through? I came in the snow and the sleet, said Turlow, not understanding at first. I go as I came. The priest shook his head. It is more than a mortal sea. Your hands are red with blood and you follow a red sea path. Yet the fault is not wholly with you. Almighty God, when will the rain of blood cease? Turlow shook his head. Not so long as the race lasts. The morning wind caught and filled his sail. Into the west he raced like a shadow fleeing the dawn. And so passed Turlow Dub O'Brien from the sight of the priest Jerome, who stood watching, shading his weary brow with his thin hand, until the boat was but a speck far out on the tossing wastes of the blue ocean. That is from the dark man one of the amazing stories you'll find in this, Heroes in the Wind, from Cull to Conan, the best of Robert E. Howard. And this, my friends, is your mighty penguin for the day, your Sunday penguin here at Stately Vaughn Manor. So yes, your Sunday penguin, Heroes in the Wind, from Cull to Conan. This is a pretty fantastic book, let me tell you, because this is by Robert E. Howard, the greatest pulp writer who ever lived. This is true. He was just that. Now, there are other pulp writers who have become classic writers in their own right. You can just think of Raymond Chandler or Dashiell Hammett or even H.P. Lovecraft. But here's the thing. None of them were really just pulp writers, not pure pulp writers. They wrote in the pulps because, well, those are the places that would publish their stuff. But they were all, even Lovecraft in his way, more literary than that. This guy, Robert E. Howard, pure pulp through and through. Now this isn't an insult, oh no. He was the best at what he did. And there was plenty of real feeling and real emotion. And there was actually a lot in these stories that made him deeper than you might think at first. Particularly if you only know Robert E. Howard from Conan of the comic books, or even worse, Conan of the cartoons. There was a Conan cartoon, but let's try to put that out of our minds. And of course, there was the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. 
movies. There was a couple of those. But the real deal were the stories that were written by Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard didn't live very long, and he wrote his, show, his stories in the 20s and the 1930s. But uh, he, didn't, he didn't live very long, poor Robert E. Howard. He, he, he was born in 1906, and he died in 1936 when he was 30 years old. Famously, uh, he ended his own life uh, after his mother had passed away. Basically, he was hanging on just because he knew he needed to be there to take care of his mother. But he was a depressed man, and he had a lot of issues, poor Robert E. Howard. And he probably would have ended his life a lot sooner than he did if he hadn't had to take care of his mother, if he didn't feel that responsibility. And it would have been even a greater loss than it was, as it, as it was. It's a pretty terrible loss, because this guy, Robert E. Howard, was an incredible writer. And if you're a fan of Robert E. Howard, you know he just didn't write Conan. He created a bunch of other great pulp heroes, like Cull, King Cull. Uh, he created Solomon Kane, the Puritan adventurer. Uh, he created uh, Bran MacMorn, the Pictish king. Uh, and he just wrote a bunch of uh, random horror stories that were fantastic, a bunch of different event adventure stories. He wrote historical stories. He wrote boxing stories. This guy wrote a ton in a short amount of time. And he lived every story he wrote. He really did. Uh, as his friend H.P. Lovecraft pointed out, uh, him and H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft, they were pen pals. And uh, they had an awful lot of respect for each other. They wrote a ton of letters back and forth. So this book, this is a best of book. This is a modern classic, a Penguin modern classic. These are available in the UK, but this was never published in the United States as a black spine classic or anything else, which is a shame. This guy, Robert E. Howard, should be a Penguin classic everywhere. There should be a black spine Penguin classic of this guy. If Lovecraft, and Clark Ashton Smith both deservedly made it into the library, excuse me, uh, the Penguin Classics. Clark Ashton Smith hasn't broken into the Library of America yet, but he should, and so should this guy, in my opinion. But uh, this guy definitely should be uh, a Penguin Classic in America, as well as the UK. And like I said, this is a best of book has some of his greatest stories in here. There are a few best of books uh, that have come out over the years. And this one, when was this first published? I probably should have looked at this earlier because it's a tiny ass print and I don't have my glasses on. I will put it down below there somewhere in text to tell you when this was published. But it's divided into three parts. Part one, Black Dawn, which includes the King Cull sh story, The Shadow Kingdom. The Shadow Kingdom is the story that introduced King Cull, and it's also credited as being the first solid sword and sorcery story, which is something Robert E. Howard, arguably, created. Uh, also has The Mirrors of Toos and Thun, another Cull story, Kings of the Night. Great story with Bran MacMorn and Cull, a team-up. A shared universe story. Uh, we have Worms of the Earth, which is a Bran MacMorn story, which is one of the most horrific of Robert E. Howard's stories. It's a great story. It might be his best story. Maybe. It's a fantastic horror story, that's for sure, as well as being a great fantasy story. Amazing story, Worms of the Earth. What, do you disagree? You know, I liked her better when I thought she was dying. Hey, be quiet over there. Where was I? Oh, yes. And The Dark Man, which I just read from, uh, which is uh, another historical uh, supernatural story. And then part two, The Dark Interlude, which has The Footfalls Within, which is a Solomon Cain story. Uh, Pigeons from Hell, it's the second story in that section, which is a great horror story, 
has a ridiculous name, Pigeons from Hell. It's a hilarious title, but a pretty scary story, actually. It's one of his best horror stories. Graveyard Rats and Vultures of Wapeton, which is a great Western. He wrote Westerns as well. This guy wrote everything. And part three, High Noon. And so we know High Noon is going to be Conan. So we've got four great Conan stories in this volume. The Tower of the Elephant, one of the greatest Conan stories you'll ever read. Uh, uh, second story there is Queen of the Black Coast, another amazing story. A Witch Shall Be Born, excellent. And, of course, Red Nails uh, finishes up the volume. Four great Conan stories. I probably would have subbed a couple of other ones for a couple, but you know, I can't really argue. They're fantastic stories. And this is a pretty cool cover, actually, as well. So yeah, so we got here a best of volume. Now, this is a great volume if you've only heard about Robert E. Howard and you've never read his work. It's a great volume to pick up and read, uh, just to see if you like this guy. And I'm pretty sure if you read this guy's stuff, you're going to like this guy. Because he had that rare and amazing talent of writing that when you read his stories, you're there in his stories. You're experiencing the stories. You're not just reading them. Not every writer can do that. Writers that are considered a lot better than Robert E. Howard can't pull that off. He pulls that off perfectly. And the way he pulls it off is because he was in these stories when he wrote them. He experienced these stories when he wrote them. He actually shouted out the lines as he was typing at his little typewriter. Uh, I've, I've mentioned before that I've actually traveled to Cross Plain, Texas, where he lived. So I saw his tiny little bedroom where he wrote his stories on his, on his old typewriter. And it kind of blew my mind when I saw the place. And I saw where he lived, which is not a populous area across Plains. It's not now, and it certainly wasn't then. And so he was there, and he was in this tiny little room, and he created these incredible, epic stories of high adventure and horror and supernatural awfulness and just great adventure. I cannot recommend this guy highly enough, but I don't know how easy it is to find this volume anymore of uh, Heroes in the Wind, but... There are, there's another way you can go if you just want to sample Robert E. Howard. A few years ago, uh, Ballantine Books' Del Rey came out with a great set of Robert E. Howard. They published all his Conan stories, his Cull stories, all of his major fantasy and horror stories Del Rey published. And they're all still available. Well, you can still find them pretty easy. But they did make a couple best of volumes, and this is the Volume 1 Crimson Shadows. Uh, it only has a couple of Conan stories in here. They're good ones. Uh, he, he, Beyond the Black River and People, Pe People of the Black Circle are in here. Both excellent Conan stories. Valley of the Worm is in here, a non-Conan story. Of course, it has Worms of the Earth. Uh, Worms of the Earth is just incredible. Uh, <laughs> definitely, you're going to want to read that story sometime in your life couple other great stories the great god pa passes has a boxing story in here has a story called the black stone which is one of the uh one of his most famous uh horror stories has the dark man right the story i just read from yeah it's got the dark man just a bunch of really great stuff including uh red shadows is it red shadows yeah one of a great Solomon Kane story. It actually has this volume beat because this volume, in, as far as Solomon Kane goes, this volume has a Solomon Kane story, but it's not the greatest Solomon Kane story. Uh, this one is really, really good. So this volume here, the best of Robert E. Howard, volume one, volume one, Crimson Shadows, is an alternative to this one. If you can't get this one, this is a good solid one volume, but this is pretty darn good. And there is a second volume to go along with it because there's just too many great Robert E. Howard stories. Just too many of them. Gotta get them both. So yeah, there you go. Robert E. Howard and uh, his, his brief stay in the Penguin Classics. I, he was only published in this one book 
Heroes in the Wind, we still await that Black Spine classic that he deserves. I'll probably be 90 by the time it comes out, but it ought to come out, I'll tell you. So yeah, Robert E. Howard, check this guy out any way you can, and I will see you tomorrow here at Stately Vaughn Manor. Thanks, guys.